In the previous video, we talked about Cauchy's theorem. In this one, we'll be talking about Cauchy's formula. So these are two different but related entities in complex analysis. So like in the previous video, let's just go right into the formula. So in green, I've written the statement of the formula, and then in orange is the actual formula. So let's just go ahead and read it. It says, suppose f is analytic on a domain D, something we've, uh, a condition we've come across before. And gamma is a piecewise smooth, positively oriented, simple closed curve in D. So we have all these modifiers again. And the only different modifier we have from Cauchy's theorem is this positively oriented. So this is important. Um, curve in D, whose inside omega is also in D. So this is a lot of the same stuff. Then, if that's all true, we have this orange formula. We have 1 over 2 pi i integral, so line integral of f of w over w minus z uh, dw equals f of z for all z in omega. So now this is uh, probably a little bit confusing. When I learned this first, I didn't know what it was useful for, uh, and it, it was kind of confusing. But the main point to uh, look at right now is that we have our function f, and with this formula, we are able to express f as an integral. And this is very important because integrals in complex analysis are often very hard to compute, as we'll see in later videos. But uh, Cauchy's formula allows us to evaluate some uh, certain integrals very easily by just plugging in something into a function. Because if you want to evaluate some integral like this, for example, and this integral is equal to a function, then all you really have to do is just plug in a value into a function. You don't have to actually integrate anything. So that's why this is useful. And we'll do an example at the end of the video. But first, let's just go through a proof. It's not as bad as the last proof we did. Um, so let's just dive right into it. So the proof starts. It says uh, z is an element of omega, which we stated up here. So there exists a delta naught, which is greater than zero, which is also small enough so that this disk right here, so this is the disk notation, so that the modulus of w minus z is less than delta naught. So uh, just a note, we're using w as our independent variable and z as a certain complex number, which will become more clear in a second. Um, so this disk is in omega. Suppose now we have an even smaller positive number, which is still positive, delta. So this delta is sandwiched between zero and delta naught. And suppose omega sub delta is the domain obtained by deleting the disk, this disk right here, from omega. So now, yes, this is all very confusing. So let's look at the picture and let's make sense of this piece by piece. So first, z is an element of omega. Okay, so I have my uh, D is my domain, this green. Now my curve is this orange one, this gamma right here, this orange loop. And it satisfies all the criteria on piecewise smooth, positively oriented, um, and so on. So it's positively oriented because as you travel across it, you're always keeping the inside, omega, to your left. Okay? So now, uh, Z is an element of omega. So I went ahead and put my Z right here. So the black dot right here is my Z. So what's the next thing? So there exists a delta naught greater than zero, small enough so that this disk is in omega. And this is kind of the beauty of domains, because since domains are open sets, um, you can, no matter where your z is, even if it's at the very, very edge of omega, like just barely uh, near the boundary, you can always find a small, small disk that does not touch the boundary, and that disk is completely inside um, your omega. So in this case, I didn't make it so drastic. I kind of put it in the middle. So just to make it more clear. So now Z has this black open disk around it. So that dotted black disk you see, I've labeled as modulus W minus Z is less than delta naught. So this is an open disk. And, um, th and then we have it fully inside omega. What's the next thing? Now suppose we have a delta sandwich between delta naught and zero. So this is something you should note about numbers. Um, if you didn't note it already, so since we said delta naught, it's possible it's a very, very, very small positive number. But even if it's very, very, very small, we can always find a positive number smaller than it. That's how numbers work. They're, they're not touching each other. There's always lots of gaps in between them. So since that's possible, I made this new circle, red one, which has a radius smaller than the black one. And this one is modulus w minus z is less than or equal to delta. Notice the less than or equal to. So we're including the boundary of this one. Okay. And suppose delta, uh, suppose omega sub delta is the domain obtained by deleting that disk that we see here from the original omega domain. So I've drawn that new domain here. So we see that this whole brown domain right here is this whole brown domain originally. And this, this hole in the middle is this same hole that's uh, generated by this disk. 
So our new domain, omega sub delta, is going to be just what's left over after we take the whole out. Now, this new domain is composed of two boundaries. Originally, it was just composed of one boundary, which was gamma, and that boundary still exists. It's still positively oriented, which is why I put a plus right here. But now we've created a new boundary by making a hole. We created the boundary of this hole itself, and we're going to assume it's going to be neg negatively oriented. And remember, negatively oriented means that as you travel across it, the the uh, area, the domain, is always to your right. So just re reassure yourself of that. As we travel across this in this direction, we're always keeping the domain to our right, which is why I put a negative sign right there. It's going to be important why I put negative. So the important thing to know is that we have this new domain, which is a, uh, it, it's a domain with a hole in it, okay? So the next thing we do is we're going to apply the cauchy riemann equations, Green's theorem, Cauchy's theorem to this new function. So uh, we just made this function up. So this function is going to be g of w equals our function f of w divided by w minus z. And what's z? Remember, z was the center of what we just deleted. So the important thing to know is that z, the complex number z, is no longer part of this domain. We took it out. Okay, why is that important? Well, it's important because... Uh, this function on this domain D is going to be analytic on omega sub delta. And why is it analytic? The only way it wouldn't be analytic is if something weird happened in the denominator. So for example, if uh, the denominator was zero, then it wouldn't be analytic there. And how can the denominator be zero? Only if W equals Z, then we have problems. But on this domain, can W ever equal Z? No, because we cleverly just took it out. So there's no, there's no problems going on here. So that means that G is always analytic on omega sub delta. So now, uh, by Cauchy's theorem, remember Cauchy's theorem says that if we have a uh, if we have a function analytic on some domain, then this part of this integrand right here, which comes from uh, the double integral formula for the, which is translated to the line integral, equals zero. We did that using Cauchy Riemann equations. So this equals zero in the uh, domain. So omega sub delta. So that means that if we take the double integral of this dx dy over this omega sub delta, that's going to be zero. But what is true about this? We, since in the previous video, we went from the line integral to the double integral. In this one, we're going to go backwards from the double integral. This is equal to the integral of g of w dw over the boundary of the domain in question. What's the domain in question? It's going to be omega sub delta. So uh, this notation right here, I don't think we went over it. It's going to be, uh, it means the boundary of our domain. So this delta is not to be confused with this delta. Um, this delta in the front means boundary. So just read it as boundary of omega sub delta. So you can just read the bottom in parentheses if that's easier for you. Okay, so remember this boundary consists of two parts. Consists of the uh, original gamma and the new disk, the hole we took out. And this all equals zero because the inside, the integrand right here equals zero. Okay, so now this also equals what? As we noted, this consists of two pieces. It consists of this piece right here. So this is going to be the gamma piece minus this piece right here. And why minus? Well, that has to do with the whole negatively oriented thing. So if it's negatively oriented, we subtract it. Okay, so minus the integral of g of w dw over this part. And what is this? This is just a circle because it's going to be a modulus of w minus z equals delta. So that means that the distance from w to z is always equal to delta. And what do we call something where the distance is always fixed around a center point? That's a circle. Okay, so now we have this minus this equals zero. So what can we say about those two? We can equate them, since if this minus this is zero, then they're the same. So that means that the integral of f of w over w minus z, and I got this by just taking uh, g of w and expanding it back to what it is. So g of w equals this. So uh, goodbye g of w for now. We're just going to go back to this dw equals, and then again we expanded g of w back to what it is, equals this integral. So now um, our work is almost done. All we have to do is we're going to... This is the integral we actually want um, because that has the most, it, it looks the most like the formula that we saw in the beginning of this. Um, so we need to work on this one. So let's evaluate this integral using um, some evaluation techniques we learned in the line integrals video. So we're going to evaluate this. And the things to keep in mind are we're going to parametrize it. So the curve we're doing around is modulus w minus z is equal to delta. And what is that curve? That we said was the circle. And remember how to parametrize a circle? 
it's going to be W equals Z, which is the center of the circle, plus delta, which is the radius of the circle, times E to the I theta. That's how we learn how to parameterize a circle. That's going to be what W equals. And theta goes from what to what? Remember, it goes from 0 to 2 pi, because we want the full circle, not just like half the circle or anything like that. So now, this is going to be equal to, so we have new bounds, because we're doing it in terms of theta now. So it's going to be theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, f of w, w is this, so we just substitute this right here for w, so f of z plus delta e to the i theta divided by w minus z is what? Well, w equals z plus delta e to the i theta, so w minus z would just be uh, this much, would just be this portion right here. So I put that there. Um, and remember, when we when we parameterize when we make when we parameterize it and make the new integral here, we have to also keep in mind to do w prime of theta and tag that on at the end. So if you don't remember why we do that, um, go back to the line integrals video and just a quick refresher. So what is w prime of theta? Well, it's going to be dw d theta. The z doesn't have any bearing on it, so it's just going to be delta times e to the i theta times i. So we have delta e to the i theta times i, and that's uh, d. And then we have to put the d theta because we have we change it to a new variable. So now the nice thing is that this delta e to the i theta cancels with this delta e to the i theta, and we're left with equals i. Don't forget the i. Uh, I integral 0 to 2 pi of f of z plus delta e to the i theta d theta. Okay, so now almost done, just like three more steps. So from there, we're going to let delta approach 0. So what does that uh, graphically mean? That graphically means that we're going to have this red circle getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this hole is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until uh, it's virtually gone. So we're back to our original uh, omega domain, basically. So we're going to let delta approach 0. So let's reference this right here. Um, this is what we had in the last step. As delta approaches 0, delta e to the i theta approaches 0, because delta is 0 and this is uh, not 0. So this is going to be approaching just f of z. So we're going to get i integral 0 to pi f of z d theta. And that is going to be what? Since f of z has nothing to do with theta, it's a fixed number. Remember, z was a fixed number, so f of z is a fixed uh, number. So it's just going to be i, this i stays um, from before, and then this is just going to be 2 pi f of z. And how do we do that? Well, if we really want to integrate this, this is going to be uh, theta times f of z, and the bounds are going to be 0 to 2 pi. So it's going to come out to 2 pi f of z. And then we tag the i on, because it's on the outside. So what does that mean in all? Um, since we said that this equals this, and we said that this comes out to uh, 2 pi i f of z, that means that this right here in the pink uh, bracket right here equals 2 pi i f of z. So that means that that equals 2 pi i f of z. And then if we re rewrite this, we want to isolate the f of z. So we isolate f of z, and we take 1 over 2 pi i to the other side. We get f of z equals 1 over 2 pi i integral f of w over w minus z dw, and that's over the curve, just gamma, right? So um, that's exactly what we set out to prove. That's what this orange was trying to show us. Okay, so now let's do an example. And this example will kind of help us to see why this is even useful and what I was talking about before, how this will help us evaluate certain integrals. So let's go ahead and do uh, this example right here. So we want to evaluate integral um, of z squared over 4 minus z squared on this curve. This is our gamma. It's going to be magnitude of z plus 1 equals 2 dz. So first thing, always, always draw a graph so you know what's going on. So let's draw our gamma. So it's going to be centered at negative 1, minus 1, with radius 2. So I'm going to draw 2 in all directions. So this is going to end up at 1. This is going to end up at minus 3. This is going to end up up here at 2i, and this is minus 2i. So we have four points of the circle, so we can go ahead and we can kind of draw it. So, uh, oh, these should be up here and down here. It looks better. So here's my poorly drawn circle. So here's the circle. This is the gamma that we're going to be taking this line integral on. So now here's something to note. Um, you should always check a few things first. You don't want to use this whole complicated thing if you can just use Cauchy's theorem. Cauchy's theorem is only usable if this function that you're dealing with inside is analytic on the in in the uh, area inside your gamma. Is it analytic in there? It's 
Well, it's not because we have a so a problem here. We have this negative 2 is in here. And if we plug negative 2 inside here, the denominator is 4 minus 4 is 0. So we have a 0 denominator and we have problems. So we can't use Cauchy's theorem. So maybe we can just use Cauchy's formula. Well, let's look at what Cauchy's formula has to say. It says, suppose f is analytic on a domain D. Well, so far, so good. We uh, Our f is analytic on any domain that doesn't contain negative 2. So let's just choose some domain like that. So this black domain right here, it is analytic on that domain, right? Because that doesn't contain anything uh, that's going to break the function. So, so far, so good. Uh, and gamma is a piecewise smooth so on curve in D. So now we have a problem because gamma, this purple curve right here, um, which I should make positively oriented. So this, this purple curve does not lie in D. And there's no way we can make it lie in D while still keeping this negative 2 out of D. So this is going to be the problem. We can't use Cauchy's uh, formula just up front. So what are we going to do? We're going to do this trick that you should... Uh, that you should be able to do when dealing with these kind of problems. So usually this trick is going to involve something where the denominator is factorable. So let's just deal with this inside function, which is causing us so much trouble. So this z squared over 4 minus z squared can be rewritten as z squared over 2 minus z, 2 plus z, right? All I did was factor the denominator. Now let's try to break this up into something that will work for us. So what I mean by that is let's call our f of z z squared over 2 minus z. So what I did was I just omitted this 2 plus z and I just defined some new function f of z equals z squared over 2 minus z. Now what can we say about this? Does this cause us any problems inside the purple domain? Um, so well this will cause a problem when z equals 2. Where is z equals 2? z equals 2 is right here. This has nothing to do with the purple domain. We have no problem here. What about when z is negative 2? When you put negative 2 in here this bottom part is 4 so no problems there. So that means that this function right here if this was a thing that we wanted to integrate, we would be fine because we can use Cauchy's formula on that because there's no problems with it. Well, it turns out we can do a little bit of sleight of hand here and we can use this function as our final function. So now let's look at this. So suppose f is analytic on a domain D, which this f is, and so on, so on, so on. This is all true. And um, who's inside omega is in D. So let's just call our D. Let's suppose it looks like this. This green, this green blob I drew and all the inside is going to be our domain D. F is indeed analytic on that because that still doesn't contain this uh, number 2. And we have our whole purple domain is fully inside D. So everything is met for Cauchy's formula dealing with this function right here. So let's just go ahead and apply it to that function right there. So then 1 over 2 pi i. So we have 1 over 2 pi i. Uh, times integral over gamma. So we have over gamma. Uh, I'll just write out what gamma is. Z plus 1 equals 2. Uh, we have f of w. So now we're going to change our independent variable to w. So it's going to be w squared over 2 minus w. And then we have this, which is the important part, over w minus z. So I'm going to have 1 over w minus z dw. And that equals what? That equals f of z. Okay, so now why does this help us? Now, we let's plug in f of negative 2 and see what happens. f of minus 2 equals 1 over 2 pi i integral z plus 1 modulus equals 2 over w squared 2 minus w. And now when we have w minus z and I plug in z as negative 2, I get w minus negative 2. So I get 2 plus w, 2 plus w dw. And now if I expand this further, I get 1 over 2 pi i integral z plus 1 equals 2 w squared over 4 minus w squared dw. And now look at this. This integral right here, excluding the 2 pi i, this is equal to what we were trying to evaluate up front. w squared over w uh, 4 minus w squared is the same thing as z squared over 4 minus z squared. And this gamma is the same, this gamma is the same. So now if I just take the 2 pi i over to this side, I'm going to get... Uh, I will get 2 pi i f of minus 2 equals that integral right there, equals what I want. And can I find 2 pi i f of negative 2? Yeah, easily. Because f of negative 2, I just, all I have to do is plug negative 2 into this function. If I put f of negative 2, I get negative 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 minus negative 2 is 4. So that's just going to be 1 times 2 pi i, which means our final answer in the end is going to be 2 pi i. And notice we didn't have to do any integration at all. We didn't have to do any like standard 
what you think of integration as, you know, anything like that. All we had to do was find a suitable function and then go through with Cauchy's formula and just plug in the corresponding things. So just to recap, what you want to do on these kind of problems, um, you, what you want to give a try, first thing you want to do is see if Cauchy's formula works. Because if it works and it's a closed loop and everything is differentiable, then you can just say the answer is zero. You want to see if this is, uh, you can put this into Cauchy's formula. If none of that works, um, then what you want, what, what you want to do most likely, you're probably not going to put into Cauchy's formula right away. What you want to look for after using Cauchy's theorem is that if this is, if this is factorable, then factor it and then choose the numerator and choose one part of the denominator that's going to work in your gamma. So probably something in the, you can choose one of these two factors um, so that the numerator over one of the two factors in the denominator will be analytic inside your inside the uh, omega domain. And once you have that, you're set. Because all you have to do is just set up Cauchy's formula as you see it here. And then the the uh, w minus z portion will turn into the second part of your denominator when you plug in the suitable z. So you just have to plug in the suitable z, multiply by 2 pi i. So 2 pi i times f of whatever is going to be the answer to your problem. So um, so if that, if that made sense, uh, that's, that's good. If it didn't make sense, leave a comment. I'll do another example or something like that. Um, but with practice, it should make sense. So until next time.